Good Monday morning to you. Glad to be with you. Glad to start another week. Here we go. Um, another week for us to uh, exalt and lift up the name of Jesus. Another week for us to um, grow in our faith. Another week for us to grow in our relationship with uh, one another, uh, which is part of um, part of what we do as believers. Um, so, yeah, we're glad to, to be part of that. Glad to be part of the journey with you. So uh, thank you for joining me this morning and thank you. I hope we'll spend another week together. Um, if this is your first time, welcome. If this isn't your first time, welcome. <laughs> we're glad to, to be together with you. Um, we always give you kind of some uh, updates on some things that are happening at Shoreline. Um, I'll reduce it down to just one today. Um, we have opened up registration for water baptism, which is Sunday, April 11th. And, uh, we hope that if you have not been baptized yet, um, and you say, well, I was baptized as a child. Uh, do you remember that? No, of course not. Well, if you don't remember it, then it couldn't be a profession of faith. Um, it's not some religious thing we do. It is our, um, we like to say it's the wedding band on our relationship with uh, Christ, that um, it is the outward sign of the inward work that God has done in our lives. And so we, um, we are baptized not as some religious activity. We are baptized um, to declare to the world that uh, we are followers of Jesus Christ and that we are never going back to our old life because our old life is dead. That's why we go down in the water, gone, see ya, and we come up uh, representing, symbolizing the new life we have in Jesus Christ. So um, yeah, if you haven't been baptized, you need to you need to do that. So um, April 11th, the Sunday after Easter, is uh, our next baptism service. We hope you'll join us. So we are looking <laughs> at um, seven uh, I am statements of Jesus in the Gospels. And uh, today we come to a very, very familiar uh, I am statement. And uh, it's this from John chapter 10, verse 11. And then he also um, doubles down and explains it a little bit more in verse 14. He says this, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by my sheep. I know my sheep and am known by my own or by my sheep. So I, I want to give some characteristics of this I am statement because um we, if we go back into the 23rd Psalm, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, right? So David was a shepherd. Um, David, the shepherd boy, you know, we, we have sung songs about that. We've heard talks about that. Um, it's, it's, you know, so David outlined some things in the 23rd Psalm. If you go back and read that, that, epitomize the view of a shepherd. Um, and he says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is the one who um, is the example to us, right? And this is coming from someone who was a shepherd. This is coming from someone who knew what it meant to be um, in that profession, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Um, the, the idea that um, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. He What's the good shepherd do? He restores my soul. He leads me into paths of righteousness for his name's sake, right? These are all attributes of a good shepherd. So I kind of wrote down a, a few attributes that I think we should be aware of that the good shepherd, Jesus, the good shepherd is to us. First of all, he's attentive. He's attentive. A good shepherd knows where the sheep are. A good shepherd does his job 
well. And what's the shepherd's job? The shepherd's job is to protect and keep the sheep safe. It's the shepherd's job to make sure none of the sheep are lost. It's the shepherd's job to keep them healthy and strong. A good shepherd is an attentive shepherd. Our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, is attentive. I am the good shepherd. A, a good shepherd's engaged. Um, you, you ever go to a restaurant or an ice cream shop or... or uh, store grocery store or Kohl's or whatever and and there's just someone just standing there one of the employees just standing there on their phone not watching what's going on don't care and you've got a question they just they don't care right we, we've all been there we've all seen if you haven't you might be that person I'm just kidding I'm just kidding don't be offended um please but um that that doesn't happen with Jesus he's engaged He's he's aware of what's going on. He knows what you face. He knows what you're going through because he's engaged in your life. The the third thing I thought of is this: the the good a good shepherd is caring, right? He he cares about the things that you care about. And there's sometimes, can I tell you? There's sometimes we think Jesus doesn't care. This is too trivial. This is too small. He's got bigger things to worry about. You know how many times I've heard people say that? He's got bigger things to worry about. Let me let me help you out with something here. You ready? Everything is small to God that we face. Oh my goodness. Follow me. There's nothing that God can't handle with equal power. So... If you're underwater financially and you go, God isn't going to care about that. There's, there's, you know, there's a pandemic going on. Yeah, God's got the pandemic completely under control and he's got your financial concerns completely under control. Neither one makes God sweat. He's got it completely under control. Your marriage, your work, your kids, your finances your emotional worries are, are, are no smaller to God or bigger to God than cancer. They're no smaller or bigger to God than world financial. You see what I'm saying? It's all within God's purview and he does care. He cares. He cares about you. He cares about what you face and what you're going through and, and your trials and circumstances. So bring it to him. Don't feel like you're overburdening him or bothering him. He's never bothered. He loves it when you come to him. He cares. And here's the other thing. Guess what? He cares when you're going through good times too. And he loves it when you share it with him. You go, well, he already knows. Yeah. He already knows about your problems too. But... There's something in the sharing it with him. Share it with him because he cares. He's selfless. Good shepherd is selfless. A good shepherd, remember what Jesus said? He said this. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. Do you know that a shepherd would find an area, a closed area, a fenced-in area if possible, um, you know, those, those, uh, those, uh, Rock walls you see in like Ireland, and we have a lot of them here in New England and stuff. And you ever notice they don't have gates on them? Well, those were for shepherds to take their sheep in for the night, and the shepherd would become the gate. The shepherd would lay down across that opening, and he would literally be the gate that kept the sheep in that enclosed area. He would lay his life down at that entrance for his sheep. Think about that. Jesus laid his life down for you and for me so that we are safe. Spiritually, you and I are protected because Jesus laid his life down for us. Isn't that a great picture? A good shepherd leads well. 
Look, look at what Psalm 23 says. He leads me beside still waters. He takes me, you know, if, if the waters, the thing about sheep are they are easily spooked. They're afraid of everything. Why? Because they're defenseless creatures. Sheep are everyone's prey, right? Everything eats sheep <laughs> because they have no defenses. They can't run fast. They, they 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 can't butt heads. They they, they they're, they're defenseless basically, and so they needed a shepherd. And the other side of this is sheep get afraid when the water is going too fast. Don't you see the picture that David paints here? He leads me beside still waters. Isn't this a beautiful? There's two parts of this that are just just really beautiful number one a good shepherd knows where the still waters are he knows where the good refreshing places are for our soul he's going to lead you to places that are refreshing for your soul he's going to lead you to places where you are strengthened and renewed that's what a good shepherd does he leads well the other side of this is that he is taking us where we need to be. The, the leading well is, it's, it's not just that it's the still waters, he's taking us to places that are beneficial and uplifting for us. He leads well. Then a good shepherd loves a sheep. Now, look at this. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I'm known by my own. A good shepherd knows them and they know him. Why? Because he loves them. He cares for them. He knows you by name. You're not just sheep number 23. He, he didn't have to like scribble your name on, on the back. You know, it's pretty neat if you've ever met people who um, deal with herds of animals, cows, sheep, pigs, they know them. You go and you're like, okay, they all look the same. But that farmer or that shepherd can look out in the field and go, yep, that's Mildred over there's Irma and that's uh, Ted and, you know, whatever they've named them, named them. And you go, this look like sheep to me. The good shepherd knows his sheep. And his sheep know his voice. And then, I said this already, but I just want to say it again. A good shepherd lays his life down for his sheep. David fought a lion and a bear to protect his sheep. Jesus laid down his life literally died for a sheep. No greater love has a man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus has done that for us. He has been in every way a good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. And he just didn't come to show off. He didn't just come to hang out. You came to bring us life. You came to set humanity free from the sin that we brought on ourselves. And you did that as the good shepherd. And you still love your sheep. You still provide for and you're still attentive to and you're still engaged in. You are in every way our good shepherd and we're so grateful for it. Lord, I pray today that if anyone feels detached or someone feels like you don't care for them, I pray that today would be a reminder that you're the good shepherd and that you love and care for each one of us. In Christ's name, amen. What a great, what a great I am for the beginning of the week. Thank you for a few minutes of your time. I look forward to being with you tomorrow. Have a great day.